sometimes we'll know exactly what we need to do, but for whatever reason, we can't get ourselves to do it. Like one day, everything will kind of click and I'll figure it out, but that's not that's not reality. And that day will never come and years and months of your life will kind of fly by and you'll look and you kind of have gotten nowhere and that's because you're kind of muddying your own waters. It's like if you're stuck in mud, there's only so much you can get to, right? It's like quicksand, it almost feels like. And I think you have to take life personally and you have to take your own ego personal. You have to take your own um, mishaps and your own detrimental qualities personal. And you have to make the sacrifices. And you often have to have like this chip on your shoulder. Like you're the only one that can pull yourself out of the situation or figure it out, whatever figuring out means for you. And the only way you're going to do that is by making the sacrifices needed. If you're deciding on putting yourself through the ringer and you have those sleepless nights, you have those moments where you're watching all these motivational videos or you're watching everybody kind of live out your dream and it's bringing you down or it's making you sad because trust me, I've been there and you're not doing anything about it. You will go nowhere and you'll go nowhere very fast. What is up, TDP family? It's your host, Adis. And on today's episode, I want to talk about sacrifices in this game that we call life. I had a really long conversation with a loved one maybe a few hours ago. And we talked about life. We talked about our personal journeys. And uh, we compared and contrasted. And it was like this really redefining moment where I realized that we're all on this like path of figuring things out in life and it genuinely should be treated like a game and like cracking this code because I see a lot of my friends a lot of my loved ones I've had these really really personal vulnerable moments with them kind of explaining my my journey and my path and I've explained to them how you know there needs to be sacrifices that are made and what I mean by that is sometimes we'll know exactly what we need to do, but for whatever reason, we can't get ourselves to do it. And I've been in that place where I was like stuck in this like redundant cycle of knowing what I needed to do, but not fully committing or not fully addressing the root cause or the root issues, although I knew what it was, but just not doing it. Right. And then I was stuck in this circle and that caused a lot of anxiety, a lot of feelings of loneliness and feeling lost and not knowing, because again, like we're all on this journey. And sometimes with that anxiousness and that anxiety comes a lot of really dark moments where we're questioning things, we're comparing ourselves to our loved ones, our friends, our family, people we idolize in society. And that often comes because there's a big question mark in our journey, right? And when you feel lost or you don't know or have your sense of direction, that can cause a lot of really lonely moments. And trust me, in 29 years of my life, although it may seem from the outside looking in that I figured it out or I cracked a code, I haven't. And I'm still trying to crack that code. Whether that's in my personal life, whether that's in my relationships, whether that's in my job, whether that's what my goals and aspirations are, I haven't fully cracked that code. And I found that that's beautiful because that's the journey. And everyone says it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. But we're so fixated on the destination. And for some people, you might have it mapped out, right? It might be, I want to be a multimillionaire. I want to do this. I want to do that. But for me, it's been a big question mark on what do I want to get in to in life. And I kind of pushed all of that aside and just thought to myself that one day I will figure it out. Like one day everything will kind of click and I'll figure it out. But that's not, that's not reality. And that day will never come. And years and months of your life will kind of fly by and you'll look and you kind of have gotten nowhere. And that's because you're kind of muddying your own waters. It's like if you're stuck in mud, there's only so much you can get to, right? It's like quicksand, it almost feels like. And I think you have to take life personally and you have to take your own ego personal. You have to take your own 
um, mishaps and your own detrimental qualities personal and you have to make the sacrifices and you often have to have like this chip on your shoulder like you're the only one that can pull yourself out of the situation or figure it out whatever figuring out means for you. And the only way you're going to do that is by making the sacrifices needed, right? If you're someone that's, you know, in your 20s or in your early teens or whatever, right? And you're smoking weed or you're partying or you're drinking. These are all things that are not going to help that end goal, even if you don't know what that end goal is, right? You might have an idea of what that means. Fast car, nice stuff, nice house, whatever. We all want the nicer things in life. Well, some people. And But you might not know how you're going to get there or what that means or what is going to bring you to that level. And that brings you to a place of anxiety. You're worrisome. You're anxious. Um, You might be making the wrong decisions or you might be life kind of comes at you and you're like, why me? But until you get outside of this, like, why me? And how can I actually take direct control of the situation? How can I directly affect my future in a way that helps mitigate these bad qualities that I have and these bad things to happen to me? Then you'll find it because like for the longest time, I was doing all the research. I was, I, I knew what not to put in my body, what not to do. Don't party, don't drink, don't smoke, don't do this, don't do that. But I decided that in those moments, That it was okay to do that, I'll figure it out later, or that day will come. But no, you have to make those sacrifices now. And if you're deciding on putting yourself through the ringer and you have those sleepless nights, you have those moments where you're watching all these motivational videos or you're watching everybody kind of live out your dream and it's bringing you down or it's making you sad because trust me, I've been there and you're not doing anything about it, you will go nowhere and you'll go nowhere very fast. And I was stuck in this redundant cycle of knowing what I needed to do as far as my schedule, what pieces I need to put together to paint this like beautiful picture that I wanted one day. But I decided on just kind of talking about it and having this delusional confidence that one day it will make sense. But that day will never come. And I realized that very, very fast. And I realized that in my journey, I realized that in the journey with my family, my friends, my loved ones who feel lost because it's okay to feel lost. It's okay to not know. It's a very human experience, right? Because you can be in a job where all of the boxes are checked. You earn a good living. You have food on the table. You drive a nice car. You do all of these things and it just doesn't feel right. You're constantly searching for the next best thing or you just don't feel content. But you need to grab the bull by the reins and say, look, why do I feel this way? And how can I change certain aspects to get that end goal, whatever that end goal means? Because it's okay to still have that question mark as long as you're kind of checking off stuff and trying. It's like trial and error until you figure it out, right? It's okay to feel lost. It's okay to be in a job that you don't like that doesn't fulfill you. Because again, for me, I've never settled. I've always had this chip on my shoulder where I wanted to prove myself right. I didn't care about proving other people wrong. I wanted to prove Adis right. And that's the chip you have to have on your shoulder. You have to say, you know what? I'm okay with looking like a fool with the world. I'm okay with putting it all in the line with the world because I'm I'm okay with walking away from something that someone else would kill to be in. I'm okay from taking myself out of this situation. And although it might look crazy to somebody else, although to someone else, this is like the most cookie cutter, perfect life that they want to live. If it's not fulfilling you, then you know something's wrong and you need to fix it and you need to attack it. But the only way to fix it is to attack it and not be complacent and and live this life where it's almost this imposter syndrome where you're looking at other things that you want to aspire to be or aspire to do and you're just doing the bare minimum and you're constantly in the cycle because trust me I've been there and I've been there for 20 something years of my life and it's not a good feeling it's not a good feeling of not knowing what you want to do not knowing where you're at, not knowing if this is the life you want to be in, not knowing if this is the partner you want to be with, even if it's with relationships, not knowing if this is, you know, what everything is cut out to be or what life's 
purpose is. I felt that. I continuously feel that. I don't think there's going to be a magic moment where it's an aha moment. I think there's always going to be a question mark. There's always going to be that what if, but it's up to you to minimize those moments and start attacking life and grabbing the bull by the reins. And how you do that is sacrificing things, sacrificing hours out of your day to kind of attack this, whether that means not going out, whether that means you have to cut this person out of your life because they bring you down, whether that's walking away from a relationship, whether that's that's walking away from a job, whether that's stopping and uh, stop smoking weed, because that's something so big in our culture, right? Where we do things that are detrimental to our brains, we know it's bad, or drinking, or partying, or anything outside of the superficial means of bringing yourself down, because that can mean so many different things, right? It doesn't have to be that, but if you know you're doing something that's detrimental to where you're going or whatever you're doing, whether it's your routine, whether it's your job, that's not working and it's bringing you to a state of anxiousness and anxiety, then maybe you need to change your path. Maybe you need to detour. Maybe you need to hit that left instead of that right that you continuously hit because once you hit that right... You hit two, three rights, you're back at the same point as where you were before. Maybe you have to go left. Maybe there is a fork in the road where you will have to make a tough decision, although you want to be comfortable, although this is comfortable to you. Staying in this relationship is something that you're used to. Staying in this job is what puts food on the table for you. And I don't, I'm not saying that you know, working a nine to five is bad or doing whatever. You might have to work that nine to five to get that end goal, whatever that question mark is in your life. I'm not saying that, but you know what you have to do. You know the sacrifices you need to make, but you just have to do it. You have to commit. You have to have that chip on your shoulder that I need to prove myself right. And sometimes it might be in front of the world. Sometimes it might be in front of your family who doesn't agree. Sometimes it might be in front of whoever You have to block that out. You have to control your urges. You have to control your destiny as best as you could because nobody is going to pull you out of the mud. I've realized that. I've depended so much on this idea that one day I'm going to figure it out. One day, if all else goes wrong, I will have my parents to back up, to to, uh, kind of lean towards, or they will back me up. Whatever it is, I think now in in the day and age that we're at, in this constant state of comparison with the people that you idolize, the people that you see on social media. Again, you have to remember that what you see on social media, what you see on the internet, what you even see when you're outside in the real world, outside of this fictitious, uh, uh, fake world that we live in uh, on a on a little screen, is sometimes not all that meets the eye, and you have to be very comfortable with that because all the glitz and glamour. And your path, your journey is different than mine, right? And I'm very vulnerable when I talk to my loved ones, when I talk to people and they ask me and they get, they want to take advice from me and I tell them all of the good. And then I also tell them all of the bad, how long it took me to get to this point, how long I'm still battling these quote unquote demons, these bad qualities, these bad traits. I have bad days. I have days where I'm doubting myself or questioning things or questioning why I feel this way. Why if everything from the outside looking in is perfect, perfect job, perfect relationship, perfect this, why do I feel this way? Am I self-destructive? Am I sabotaging something so beautiful, but if you know there's something wrong, you have to trust that gut feeling and you have to do something different because you can't expect different results by doing the same thing. And deep down inside, when I talk about sacrifices, I I know there's something in us that inhibits our own growth, right? And we have this self-fulfilling prophecy that we want to attain this idealistic, amazing viewpoint on society that might not exist. And when you think, okay, am I chasing rainbows? Am I chasing a reality that's just not there and it's a mirage? And when I get there, I'm still going to feel this way. I would rather chase that than to settle and live in a state of anxiety and fear and loneliness where I I don't feel fulfilled, I don't feel happy in my own job, in my own relationship or whatever. And the journey might be worth it, right? It's like a game and I want to crack that code so desperately, so badly. And I know 
In that story, in that main character syndrome that you have to have in life, you are going to have moments where it's rocky, your self-doubt is going to come in, there are going to be levels that are harder than the last level, It's you have to fail forward, sometimes you might have to re, uh, reimagine or replan another opportunity to conquer that level, and that's okay, but you can't have pity for yourself, you can't dwell in the state of okay, things are not working, and if you feel bad for yourself, you have to be like, look, I haven't cracked it yet, but eventually I will. I don't even know which way I have to go, but I need to keep going forward. I need to change something in my life. I need to eliminate the bad. I need to take away the things that can kind of pull me away from this goal. But the thing is, you might not know what that goal is or how to get to that goal. And if you don't know those two aspects, that can be a very lonely place because you're looking at everybody else and you're like, they figured it out, right? But I haven't. And that's a feeling. And I encourage everyone out there to believe in yourself, delusionally think of yourself in the highest regard in the sense where like, look, I am the main character in my own story. I don't care if they call it a syndrome. I don't care if they call it some weird ego tip. You have to be, you have to be this main character and you have to figure it out. And I found a lot of happiness with the small wins and a lot of just this idea that I'm going to figure it out and I have this chip on my shoulder and I'm not going to let anybody take that away from me. Despite anything, I need to figure it out. I need to, whatever that means. And for me, I'm going to be honest with you guys, like me cracking the code is maintaining my integrity, maintaining my character, remaining pure, being a good human being, being a man of principle, and a man of quality, somebody that someone can lean in and say, this person doesn't have ulterior motives. This person isn't thinking of something but telling me something else. I'll be vulnerable with the people I love, even strangers, and also accomplishing my goals and my dreams. I want to have this perfect state of being, even though we're not perfect creatures and we're on this earth to make mistakes, but accomplishing my goals, but not selling my soul in midst of everything. And I think that is what my goal is. And it's still a big question mark on how I get there and how I attain that, that hundred percent being that I feel that I could be, but that's my goal. I want to accomplish all my dreams monetary wise or everything, but maintain integrity, maintain my character, my principles, being a good human being, being a good brother, being a good cousin, being a good um, dad one day, inshallah, being a good partner, being everything while, because I'd be lying if I said my goals and dreams as far as business, what I want to do there is not there because that's 100% a goal of mine of, of really succeeding in life, but also leaving a legacy worth noting and worth talking about where people will, when I'm gone off this planet, will say that was a good person that did it and eliminated the bad in his life and eliminated the bad qualities and really made something of himself. So I think it's okay to feel lost. It's okay that you might not know what that goal is or what path that to go, but not dwelling in that and making the sacrifices and letting go of the baggage and kind of clearing your head and moving in the right direction and maybe making that left instead of those two, three right turns that will lead you in the same spot you were before. And with that, I leave you. You can find us at youtube.com slash the demon podcast and youtube.com slash Neela Carey for all your makeup needs. TDP, we out.